All right, good afternoon, guys. I guess I didn't suck last year because I got upgraded to this room. Um, my name's Andrew Gavin, I'm with Verizon Business, and I have with me Michael Balcom and uh, Charles Smith from N2 Net Security. And we're going to talk today about how you can use OpenDLP to, uh, through, through Metasploit with existing Metripreter sessions that you might have popped. So without further ado, we'll get going. Uh, just a, a, a brief uh, before I get going, uh, everything that we say up here is our own. We're, we're not here representing our companies or anything. And if you use what we talk about today to get in trouble, that and it's not our fault, so don't try to blame us or anything. So what we're going to do today is to uh, briefly go over what OpenDLP is. I, I've given talks about this before, so I'm only going to take a couple minutes on that. And then uh, Michael and Charles are going to talk about the limitations of using OpenDLP for pen testers and how they got around that. They basically built this new middleware to integrate between OpenDLP and Metasploit and it's really awesome. So uh, we, we've got a few demos for you and we hope you guys like this. So just a brief recap of OpenDLP. It's a data dis discovery tool and it is uh, written in, in Perl and C for the different components released under the, the, uh, the GPL. So it's uh, free and open source. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is just strictly the Windows agent scanner. Uh, OpenDLP has support for agentless scanners for uh, file systems and databases, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. So uh, just to show you what it does, I'm not going to talk to these slides here. I'm just going to show you the, to walk through it. Uh, there's the mouse. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a profile. This is the old way of doing it, by the way, not the cool new way. So we'll just name this uh, DEF CON agent, if I can type. And we want to scan, the scan type is a Windows file system agent. So the username is developer. developer. And what's the password? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. <laughs> so the same password as my luggage. MS Home. So we got some dummy stuff in uh, a directory here. We don't want to do a full scan because that might take an hour. So just documents. We'll scan for some fun regexes. So Amex, discover, and this mouse. <laughs> MasterCard, Soch Visa. And uh, we have to fill out our basic auth credentials, so DDT and open DLP agent. Fill out that garbage. And we submit our profile. So this is what we can reuse all the time. Uh, and what we're going to do next is just start a new scan and just fill out the name of a scan called DEF CON. And we want to do the DEF CON agent. And then the IP address is 56.102. So we'll start that. So now in the background what it's doing is it's pushing all these files over SMB to the Windows system that we want to scan. And it's going to start that off as a service and uh, it's going to run at low priority. It's going to limit itself to a percentage of that target system's memory. So it's not going to totally destroy and crush the box when you're scanning it. Every so often it's going to call back to the web app with results over a two-way trusted SSL connection so you can uh, securely transmit results. and. This should quickly finish. Whoops. To view the scan. So it's running right now. It should finish in a little bit. When it's all done, it's going to send a message from the agent to the web app, and the web app's going to automatically uninstall it as a service. It's going to delete all the files that it had, like its binaries and its DLLs and things like that. So if we just wait here, here it's done. And you can see that it's found what it thinks are SOC numbers credit card data, all in these plain text files, data at rest. So you could click on these files and it would open, open that file and you could verify whether it's actually a SOC number or whatever. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to, uh, to Michael. He's going to talk a little bit. So uh, under the current uh, implementation, uh, you know, we found that uh, we'd had, well, A, we had to have passwords and, uh, you know, Necessarily, we may not through a pen test. So what we tried to do is uh, is is set this up so that we didn't have to have domain domain admin all the time because you have to set up a profile per password. Um, 
So let's say we don't have domain admin now. For each system we have, each password we have, we'd have to uh, set up a new profile. And you know, generally we're just lazy, so that's not that's not the way we want to go. So the goals of this project were to be able to uh, scan machines for sensitive data, uh, both with and without credentials. We wanted the tool to have minimal impact uh, on the uh, the user, so that they aren't really knowing that uh, you know these things are going on, even. Even if we have permission, you know, we're not trying to uh, to kill the machine. Uh, the tool must clean up its deployed files so that we don't have a lot of residual files sitting around, and minimize risks of leaking data. So if we don't need to, don't pull the files off of the uh, the actual system, and you know, just not necessarily uh, you know a hard requirement, but we wanted to do this with an open source kind of tool and give back to the community. Uh, so what we found is, you know. We pretty much had the tools we wanted. We had Open DLP. We've been using that. Uh, we use Metasploit uh, often for pen tests. And you know, with these with these tools, why why go learn something else? So, is there a way we could make these things work together and give us and uh, give us uh, some uh, ability to do the uh, the tasks at hand? So, Open DLP was was just about the solution. You know, as we said earlier, you know, we we had to provide credentials. Uh, during a pen test, we may not have the credentials. Uh, we may have the hash. We may not have the domain admin. Even you know, even if we even if we get the uh, can get a hash dump, we may not be able to get the domain admin if they haven't logged into that system. Um, while we can use the system accounts, also it's kind of cumbersome, and you know we keep going back to the you know we're kind of lazy and we want to do this the, the easiest way possible. So um, no credentials, you know. It's not a problem, you know. Metasploit can do this for us. We go and we uh, we break a system. We have Meterpreter session running, and we can we can basically use the Meterpreter session to download our download our deployed files, uh, execute, install services, uh, delete services. Uh, you know, anything that we needed to do for Open DLP, we can do through the Meterpreter session. So, uh, you know, it was just generally that, that that's a great method. Then then we had RPC. So, because of the Metasploit RPC, we could communicate. To the uh, to the system under uh, test with uh, with Open DLP and control everything that we could from the console. Well, most everything you can from the console. Uh, why Metasploit? Well, it's this tool we had heard of and it was pretty cool. So um, you know, you know we're sitting here. It has an RPC interface, like I said. You know, has many routines to you know, elevate privileges. We could download, upload files, execute applications on the target. Um, you know, deploying services was was crucial so that we didn't have to also distribute like sc.exe uh, to these systems. And now we're a little bit closer towards having a fully open source capable uh, uh, offering. And for now, uh, we'll turn this over to, to Charles, who did most of the implementation. Uh, and let's go. Thanks, Mike. So as you can see, OpenDLP and Metasploit together uh, satisfies those goals Mike was just talking about. Uh, we, can we can deploy with Metasploit without any kind of credentials. Uh, and there's an added benefit that whoever's using OpenDLP to deploy has no knowledge of any of the credentials for those popped boxes. Uh, so there's an extra layer of security there. Uh, we have one profile which can de uh, deploy to hundreds of interpreter sessions all at once if you want. Um, and the big thing is there's no changes to Andrew's agent. Um, that code remains the same. It doesn't care how it's been deployed. And here you can see the typical uh, OpenDLP setup as it is now. Uh, the pen tester here hits OpenDLP via his browser, uh, which then deploys with SMB. Uh, periodically, the, the agent running on the target posts back results to OpenDLP, and we'll even tell OpenDLP when it's finished, and it'll be uninstalled by SMB. Well, we've gone and removed this SMB and replaced it with RPC communications to the Metasploit RPC server. Um, we can do all the exact same things uh, over this RPC. So I will send a command that tells it this to create a new directory on the target and then a interpreter session will be uh, the Metasploit RPC will use a interpreter session to set that to create that directory, copy files into that directory, uh, start a service, run run the sc.exe executable, and start the service. 
And the agent still posts back with HTTPS here. So that's unchanged. So to do this, I created a Perl module called metasploiter.pl. Um, and I modified a bunch of the OpenDLP web pages, or the web app pages, to include all this integration, creating these directories and uploading these files, uh, just like it's done with SMB currently. Um, I also created a Ruby module uh, that's installed in Metasploit, uh, but I'll go over that a little bit more later. Um, right now we're going to concentrate with an interpreter deployment. Uh, since OpenDLP is written in Perl, uh, I figured I should probably learn Perl. And uh, I did. And so then I created this module. And um, it's pretty much, it's a standalone module, actually. It's not tied to OpenDLP. Uh, it encapsulates the, the RPC functionality into a, a request and response uh, interface. I send a, a interpreter write, and I can, inside the code, I continually pull and wait for the response before I return. So it's synchronous. Uh, it's a general use class, and um, I hope you guys will actually take a look at it and use it because you can use it for a lot of different cool stuff. Um, but because it's general use, it left a lot of code still in the, the web app pages because I, I have to use it to create directories and, and all that. I just can't say, hey, start. Um, but it does parse all the responses for you and everything. And so here are the highlights of this, of this new module. I can use it to log in and, qu and acquire uh, credentials. Oops. Uh, I can get the current Metasploit version, uh, list of the sessions and details about each session. I can interact with sessions with interpreter reads and writes, as well as synchronous writes, upload and download files, uh, create and change the remote path, change the local Metasploit path, remotely execute applications on the target, uh, and I can check if I'm connected to an Armitage console. So this is a quick sample of the code. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but I wrote code here that will authenticate with the RPC. Um, you just give it the, the IP address and port, login and password, and it also uh, works over SSL. Um, and I have set it up so that uh, if it's successful, it will return zero. Uh, that way you can choose how you want it to die. Um, and Metasploit, or the RPC, is all over HTTPS or HTTP. Uh, which means that once you log in, you get an authentication token back. And we handle all this inside, but that authentication token is only good for a short period of time before it expires. So we also have the ability to acquire a persistent token. And uh, as long as you continue to pass that in your transactions, your uh, login won't expire. Uh, we can also I have, I create a list sessions method, which will list all the sessions on the Metasploit system, uh, and get session list will return that list as an array of hashes. And this code here just walks through that array and prints out the IP address and some info about the host. Um, I have a method get Metasploit version, uh, which will get the current Metasploit version, obviously. Uh, you can change path. Uh, I have a method called send and wait, which will send a command and wait for a response. Um, and get command response, we'll get that response. And then you can release the persistent token to log out. And this is what the output of that little application looks like. Now this is just a subset of the code that's in there. Uh, you can see you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this if you want. So this isn't perfect. There, there's a bunch of, I mean it's pretty slick, but um, Right now, it uses Meterpreter to deploy. And Meterpreter sessions uh, have no way of authenticating a user against the current session. Uh, that means you can't have two people accessing it at the same time because the way Meterpreter works, you send a request and it outputs, it puts its output into a buffer. 
if two different people send a request, the response to that, the, re the output gets put in the same buffer. So the per first person who reads from interpreter gets all of that output. So if I send a PWD and somebody else cats a file, the first person that requests a read gets all that data. Um, so really the only way right now to keep from uh, having this error, this problem, is to be like, hey guys, I'm using session three, don't mess with it right now. And that's not exactly ideal. Um, the other thing is the RPC is a command interface only. Uh, you can't transfer files over it. Uh, basically, if what you can type into an M MSF console are the only things you can send and receive uh, from your host to, to the RPC server. Um, so you can upload files, but they have to upload from the Metasploit box to the target. Likewise, when you download, they download from the target to the Metasploit box. Uh, what this really means for, for users of OpenDLP is you can't just click on a file and download it like you can with Gavin's stuff. So um, this is a problem because in addition to those original goals, we really want this to work with Armitage. Because uh, Armitage is this neat GUI for Metasploit you guys might have heard of. It's used by a lot of pen testers. I, I think we even use that, maybe. So it, it doesn't play nicely because uh, even though Armitage has a nice uh, deconfliction server, uh, we totally screw that deconfliction server up. Uh, our, our reads will pull stuff that's meant for, meta, uh, for Armitage. Uh, and it, Armitage doesn't really like not receiving its responses. Um, so for, as a stopgap measure, uh, I created a little method that will check to see if Armitage is currently using the RPC connection that we're connected to. Um, and it just returns true or false if it does. Uh, but still, it, all I can do is display a warning in OpenDLP saying, hey, you're connected to Armitage. You might want to consider telling people not to use it right now. Um, so that really wasn't ideal. That's not what we wanted. Uh, so what I did, I needed a solution for that. And the solution was to build a post module in the Metasploit. Because um, that offloads all the deployment to Metasploit. It does all the work. I can just say, hey, start it. Um, and I created this, this module, called it OpenDLP.RB, written in Ruby. Uh, and it, it's installed in the Windows Gather directory. I also created a Perl module, uh, which interfaces with this Ruby mod module. The Perl module is obviously installed on OpenDLP. Uh, and it, the only purpose of it is to connect to uh, the Metasploit R Ruby module. Uh, it's not a general use class. It's very specific. It overrides uh, the Metasploiter Perl module I made before. But it actually only uses a narrow subset of that. Uh, it, all the interpreter stuff is not used at all. It's, uh, it strictly connect, uh, communicates directly with this new post module. So uh, the first way we decided, or I decided to do this, was uh, I wanted to use the regular RPC module.execute command. Uh, but it didn't work. I mean, we could start the module, but we couldn't tell when it had finished execution. And we couldn't get any output through the RPC. Uh, this is a limitation of the RPC. Not, and um, we just thought of other ways to do this, modifying Metasploit and such. But really the easiest way, again, we're lazy. Uh, was to create a new console. And because I create the console, I get the ID, it's mine, it's tied to a, a user. Uh, and it's got this nice little busy flag. So if I start the, uh, the post module just as if I would from a Metasploit uh, MSF console, um, then I can tell when it's finished execution and I get all that output. Um, and this has the added benefit of, of being able to hack around and let us download files as well. Uh, because, because I can control the output, uh, I, in Ruby, I'll read a file off the, off the uh, target system, 
uh, base64 encode it and throw it in some headers and then print that all to the console and that allows me to fake it to be able to transfer files over the RPC. So it can work just like Gavin's stuff. And so this, most, this post module has six different actions. I can deploy, which will create a directory on the target system, upload the open DLP files, execute the archive, uh, write a configuration file, and install and start the service. I can independently start and stop the service with this module. Uh, I can delete the service, uninstall it. I can remove all the inf installation files and again I can read a file off the target system. And this is the post module that's installed in open, uh, Metasploit. So I created this new uh, Perl module to interface with this. Um, and this module does all the work of creating a console and uh, executing the post module inside. It's really easy to use. There's, you set the module name, the configuration string, which we get from OpenDLP. Uh, we just base64 it and, and set that. The source path, which is the path on Metasploit where the OpenDLP deployment file, files are located. Uh, the remote path is the installation path and the session ID is a session you want to work, we want to deploy this to. And this is probably going to be really hard to read, uh, but it works just like the previous module. Uh, you log in and authenticate, but now you can, you set the module name and in this case it's Windows Gather Open DLP and check to make sure it exists. Uh, then we set the source and remote path the configuration string and the session ID and just call deploy open DLP. It handles creating the directories, installing the service and everything. Uh, and it returns zero if it was successful. And we can download files just as easily. Uh, to get the contents of a remote file I call the method read file. It returns zero if successful and then call get file data to get the contents of that file. So to add support for Metasploit, I had to change a lot of files in OpenDLP. Um, and although I created the uh, meterpreter based deployment first, uh, the post module is obviously better because uh, it's less code and it deploys uh, without messing up your meterpreter sessions without any kind of concurrent access problems. Um, but I left them both in OpenDLP because honestly I didn't want to lose uh, the meterpreter based deployments code. Uh, the Metasploiter mo Perl module is really useful and I wanted to share it and give it back to you guys. Um, even though it's not as efficient and doesn't work as nicely. Um, so I could go over all the code changes I made. But I have a feeling most of you would get up and walk out right now. Um, and you can just download them and diff them and, and see all the coolness there anyhow. So I'm just going to go through the GUI changes and I'm going to make it kind of quick. So I had to update profiles uh, because now our profiles uh, have to contain login information to the Metasploit RPC server. Uh, just the host and port, user and password. And again, OpenDLP deployment files have to be on the Metasploit box. So you have to copy them off of open, open DLP and stick them in a directory on Metasploit. Uh, because I can download files with the new post module but I can't upload them the same way. Um, so those have to be there and that's the path that you're going to deploy from. And um, then I also have a, a latency and timeout which you can more or less ignore. And here's, here's what the new profile page looks like. And you can see all of this here is the, uh, the new Metasploit stuff. And then after here we get the installation path and from there down it's the same. And I have both the uh, meterpreter deployment here as well as the post module. The, they look identical. Um, I also ch made changes to the, uh, the start scan page. Uh, because the way Gavin stuff works, you, you have a profile and then you have to put in the IP addresses uh, manually, which is 
re if you only have system credentials, you have to put in a new IP address for every uh, profile, and you have to remember that too. Uh, domain works a little better, but you still need to know those IP addresses beforehand. Um, well, deployment with Metasploit uses sessions. Um, and those sessions aren't like IP addresses, they can change. Uh, if you, if a box loses connection and you have to repop it, uh, the session ID is going to change. And we can't use it by IP address either because you might have several different uh, uh, exploits running on a particular IP address, but only one of them is suitable to use a, a deployment for. You have to be able to get system with that uh, uh, exploit. So instead, I created a new page which will list all the current sessions and allow you to pick and choose which ones you want to deploy to. Again, we're lazy, and this makes it a lot easier. So when you start a new scan, now you, re you, and you choose either a Metasploit agent or the post module agent, uh, you'll get a little screen like this with a get sessions button. And you press that get sessions button and you're redirected to this landing page where it shows you all the currently open sessions on the Metasploit system. And uh, you just choose the ones you want and press start scan. And this brings me to the start verify page. This is the page that does all the work down inside. This is where everything, where the deployment happens, where directories are created, um, where files are copied, and the, uh, the services are started. Um, I just load the configuration parameters out of the profile and uh, deploy to either Meterpreter or Post Module uh, based bridge. And then I'll d d display a detailed uh, in, uh, output so you can determine if there's, if, if it doesn't deploy correctly, you know why. And it ends up looking a lot, a lot the same as uh, Gavin's stuff. You see here, I guess you might not be able to see, but it found two sessions and it tried to deploy to both. Uh, it start, attempted to start and then it started. Um, I changed the view results page. Uh, again, with the IP addresses, the session IDs can change. Uh, unlike the IP addresses, session IDs can change. Um, so when you go to look at your results, if the session ID has changed, you now have an orphaned uh, results in your database and no way to get those files and view them. This is because the files stay on the target system. They don't get copied into OpenDLP. Uh, there's got to be a way to reconcile uh, the orphan scan with the session it belongs to, the, n the new session. Um, so I created a page here that it, in view results, it checks to see if uh, the session is currently active and if it is, if the IP address matches. If neither of those conditions are met, it'll give you a little warning message and a button that will allow you to update. Uh, I can show you here, see, the session IDs are mismatched. It says the session has died and you won't be able to download files. If you click update session ID, uh, it'll give you a list of sessions that currently have an, a matching IP address. Um, then just click the update database with new session ID button and it will update the database in the session ID with the session ID and you'll be able to now download files with that results again. Uh, I also had to change download file uh, for the interpreter based deployment. Um, because files can't be downloaded with the interpreter based deployment, you can't get it all the way to uh, the OpenDLP web app. What I do instead is I use that path to OpenDLP files on Metasploit where the de deployment files are located and I create a path under there uh, using the IP address, the session ID, uh, and the profile name and store the file there so you can get it off the Metasploit box later. Uh, again, the post module de uh, deployment doesn't have this restriction. And this is what it looks like for a interpreter based. Uh, the path in green, if you can read it, is where it will save a file to. Um, I made some changes outside of uh, the Metasploit functionality. Um, because I was doing a lot of work on this and had lots of failed scans and uh, I had to go through and clean up the database manually sometimes because I get so many failed scans in there. 
So I modified the delete scan page so that I can select multiple scans to delete at once. And I can also um, uh, delete scans that haven't completed yet. And this is useful if you put in invalid credentials in uh, for the uh, Apache credentials to connect back to OpenDLP. And it, it just sits there and continues to run and it's, it's an orphan scan. Now you can delete it. And this is what that looks like. You can now, you have check boxes and can, and can delete multiple scans at once. And if you click this display incomplete scans button, it'll show the incomplete ones as well. And I made a little sidebar as well, which will allow you to manually uh, manage the agents installed on remote systems. Um, you can start, stop, and uninstall agents outside of the normal OpenDLP workflow. Uh, this is useful if you start a scan again, but you had incorrect credentials or it didn't work, but left inst installation files still on the box. And now you can go through and clean those up remotely without having to use Metasploit to do it. And uh, that looks like this. It just shows you the session IDs open, and you can pause, resume, or uninstall. Uh, and this is also useful if you have like 50 scans running on somebody's network and you only want them to run at night. You can grab them all and pause them all or, or delete and uninstall them all in one fell swoop. And that's what, it'll even tell you if it was in installed or not when you try and uninstall it. And that brings me to the live demo. So we have, I've already created a couple of profiles here. And this is the post module on all the Metasploit stuff. We are going to use SSL on this and um, do a limited subset here so that it completes pretty quickly. Yeah, oh yeah. The, uh, in the profiles. The, uh, the username and password here, which were for domain, are now blank. You don't need those. Uh, don't use those at all. So to start a new scan, I'm going to choose a post module deployment. And I'm going to call get sessions here. And this shows two sessions. And if you can see here, these are the same sessions open in Metasploit. I'm going to select them both and start a scan. And this will take just a couple of seconds. And here we go. We have two successful deployments. And um, we can view the results here. Post one is started. And both systems are currently running. And I can open up you can see that the agent's currently running. Now I can go over here to uh, the manage agents if I want, get those sessions, and pause that agent. And he's been stopped. Oop. Actually, it looks like he may have already finished. Yeah, they both completed so quickly I couldn't show you that. But now, with the post module, I can view these results and download them just like a, a Windows agent scan. And I can also, uh, if I want to make sure that there's no more uh, Metasploit installed on those boxes, I can try and uninstall the agents again, and it'll tell me if they're if they were installed on there or not.
you forgive me for how slow it is, I'm running four virtual machines. And here we go. It tells you that OpenDLP service wasn't installed. And I can run through here with the uh, interpreter deployment. And deploy in the same way. And here we go. You'll notice that the logs are different because of the different deployment type, but that they both did deploy and start correctly. But the difference here, when you go to view, give this a second to complete. Ah, all right, now it's completed. Now if I want to grab that allow.txt file, it has downloaded it to the interpreter, or to the Metasploit box. So it's downloaded allow.txt on session 15 to OpenDLP, which is the directory for the deployment files, with the session ID and the IP address. And I can show you that right here. And here we've got the meta reg is the name of the uh, uh, profile. Session ID. And then we've got the allow.txt. And I can also show you here, I have this old profile. And this one has a different session. Now I can just click update session ID here and it'll give me a list. Right now there's only one with that matching IP address. I click update the database. And again, I can view these files now. And so this is where you can get the new uh, OpenDLP. Andrew released this yesterday? yesterday yep. Yeah, yesterday. This was released, and you can download it and play with it right now. Uh, source code and bina binaries are there, as well as a virtual box. And um, this is us. Thank you for your time. <laughs>